K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. To get up to like $68,000, my heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Shield A-plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose, U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call 800-471-3287. U.S. Tax Shield. boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287. 800-471-3287. Wondering why you're up early with us on a Sunday morning making a cocktail? News lately got you drinking? Hung over from the mainstream media by Sunday? We are, and we got you covered. We sure do. We got your hangover cure for those weekly news blues. So sit back, top off your mimosa, and add some Baileys to that coffee. Take a match to your copy of the New York Times. Light, funny, and oh yeah, news with booze. And a lot of laughter. Welcome to Bloody Marys and Broad Sheets. I my dues to make it. And a very good, easy Sunday morning, November 22nd, 2015, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That means it's time for J.D. and Stacy for Bloody Marys and Broad Sheets on that K98 Talk. To our very good friend, Dr. Randy Arrington, who is in the chat room this morning, may I personally say, blow it out your ass, pal. As somebody who feels like garbage and is not a morning person, do not be telling me what I need to bring when and where to my own show. That's right, kids. Welcome back to all our political freaks, geeks, and back alley sneaks. Everybody within the sound of my voice, you know what to do right now. You get over to that K98talk.org. You get up to those people who are still up from last night, the ones who got up early this morning, the drunk is naked, is most fun listening radio audience in the business. Say hello to Stacy. Set that Dr. A right, telling him not to be telling that JD to have to do things on that Sunday morning, baby. Good Yeah, Lord. I have a hard time telling him to get on the air. So, Ugh, this guy and to do this. Let me tell you something, fella. You flew planes. Okay, my sugar now. <laughs> sugar now? I, 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 all right. For those Seriously, of you, I, I want to thank. We're everybody. going all Yiddish. I want to thank everybody for hanging in with me this morning. JD's feeling about fifty-seven shades of just gray and not so well, but we're going to get through to the twelve o'clock hour. Today we're going to be talking about the Obamacare debt spiral. I don't know what's going to die first, me or Obamacare. One of them, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the Syrian <laughs> refugee crisis and a whole bunch of things. What were we doing in segment three? 
oh my god, there's so much I can't oh, even right. I can't we even got, remember it all. We got Ben Stiller's getting in trouble for for Oh, uh, Ben Stiller's trannies. getting in trouble for making fun of people. Weekend update from that Mr. Eric Williams at barbwiresatire.com. Baby, remember guys, we're not just here live Sunday morning at 11 a.m. on K98 Talk. We do it again Tuesday, Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Game On. We're live. We got our lead in Thursday nights, the newest show here over in K98 Talk. That is that Bell River for whom the bell tolls. You get over, you watch all you watch all these shows. You listen to all these shows live at that K98 Talk.org. And then on Fridays, 5 p.m. drive time, you catch Stacey and I leading into that Yahoo Sports. All of that WNWNWN, JC, 1360 AM, serving that South Philadelphia. That South Philadelphia you're born and raised. Oh, my God, it's going to be an episode of The Fresh Prince. Uh- <laughs> oh, dear Lord. Speaker.com, I have nothing written down today. Hashtag Jenny and Stacey. Went, went. Flipside show, Loftus, if you're listening, this is what a train wreck sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but Trainwreck Radio beats Re-Education Radio, so let's okay, do it all Okay, terrific. Radio. You know, I'm trying not to flip back and forth on Sundays between as many of the soundboards, but then I realized I have gotten so lazy. I have gotten just so lazy. I didn't even have my own inappropriate bell on the, uh, on the, on the Sunday board, so we're going to move that over. So that well, because you might need it. Shut up! Will you stop telling me? Oh, if I mention the tents in Mecca again, all could go straight out the window. Oh, my God. Anybody who missed Thursday night show, J.D. drops five hits of ecstasy, gets to the party. We like the party. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, how can I forget? How can I forget? Today, kids, what the fuck? One more time. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. (laughs) They got to come on. Don't be LSU and drop three in a row. Good God. Oh, good morning, darling. Good morning. This is what, what is he, hold on a second. Ben still immediately told the truth. You, you know what, Dr. A, you need a, a, you need a Avi where you're smiling. I, I feel like you're one of the old Muppets. I know, he looks like the mean guy. No, he looks like one of the old Muppets in the balcony. You know what the best part about this show is? What, it ends. <laughs> 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 no, that was his serious, and it's not a blimp. It's something else. It begins with an A, but I don't remember what he told me. That was his serious TV appearance when, when the uh, it's a, it's a military let a blimp go berserk over no, no, the coast. Right. So, Dr. Randy Arrington. All right. So, Doctor. By, by the way, you have got to listen to Dr. Ray and Lou. They they live today, 3 p.m. Right? Sunday's 3 p.m. That's correct. Okay. Uh, they're also going up on that WNWNWN and JC 1360. I think it might be f- f- uh, uh, Mondays around 5. Dr. A, brilliant. Lou is the best. But, all right, so CNN, when the Malaysian plane disappeared, right, they got ratings out the wazoo. But then mm-hmm. there was no more missing Malaysian plane. So then the Zeppelin got, like, disconnected from the military thing, and it went, it's and they Zeppelin. got Dr. A. They got Dr. A. Dr. A is the CNN Zeppelin guy. So all of you remember the Christmas story where the little kid Randy was sitting around, and he opens the present, who would be a Zeppelin of mine? We do that every time Dr. A has a missing Zeppelin. So pray for missing Zeppelin so Dr. A can feed that family, baby. <laughs> Oh dear! Oh, God, is it? this guy's never gonna talk to me again? Hold on, I, I know. Re- never. I gotta reset. He doesn't the- understand. You only do that to people you really, really like. Oh, absolutely! Hold on a second. I have to reset the little, <laughs> if, the little radio he, little man. If in the Shady doesn't like you, he doesn't talk about you. Hold on a second. Right now, now I'm looking schmeckles, schmeckles, schmeckles. Hold on one second. <clears throat> oh God! Only fifty-two minutes left to go. <laughs> Oh, is this going to be one of those shows where you do a countdown till it's over? <laughs> no, I started that about three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Only on Sundays. <laughs> oh, but we do. I, I actually, I do recommend everybody go over to Thursday Night Show, hashtag JD and Stacey over at Spreaker.com. Uh, we had a really good breakdown of ISIS. I know a lot of people said that it was really informative, and we have a lot of fun at the end just completely losing it because Hillary Clinton has robot cats. Dr. No, a is always smiling on because, the nice side. Because there's an annual rave at Mecca and three million air-conditioned tents. He's not a blimp expert. Randy, I'm breaking your balls. Well, God, <laughs> Jesus, God, he's going to get the, like, a fighter bomber and come nuke the Northeast Studios. Yeah, well, nobody can, oh. You're in trouble now, dude. Good God, but I'll tell you what, back back, back in his heyday, he was a lady killer. We have some audio of Dr. A as a young lieutenant. Hey, where are the white women at? He killed them. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> if 
forgive JD. He took a lot of cold medicine this oh morning. Oh my God! Whoever let me have whoever let me have a radio show. All right, baby. The week's been well, bad Rick's enough. Fault. Week's been bad enough. We're gonna bring to you right now that weekend update for the weekend of November twenty second, two thousand fifteen. Brought to you without that Mr. Eric Williams of that barbwiresatire dot com, baby. When the sound effects don't play, baby. Be a four hour show today, baby. <laughs> After the Paris attacks, more states are rejecting Obama's plan to accept Syrian refugees. Governors not willing to take the refugees are advising Obama that if he insists on bringing them in, he can stick those Syrian refugees up his... Ooh, that was me now. <laughs> and Dianne Feinstein contradicted the president's remark that ISIS is contained, saying instead that the group was expanding. The contradiction would have made Obama look like an idiot if he weren't already one. Oh, good. These must be the warm-ups. Let's get to the good ones. Reports say that Russian President Putin has now decided that Syria's Assad must go. While Assad finds Obama's threats against him amusing, the Putin news has caused Assad to suddenly develop a clear case of incontinence. Good. Diarrhea jokes on a Sunday morning. That while everybody's in church. Good for us. We are <laughs> President a Obama show. doubled down on his strategy of military paralysis against the terrorist groups this week. He said launching more attacks against the en enemy would only serve as a recruiting tool for Republicans. Obama's White House is refusing to let governors know where they later settle... But, but they, we're going to try this again. Obama's White House is refusing to let governors know where they plan to settle the Syrian refugees. God, I can't get through this. Instead, the president says he intends to scatter the refugees, wait for them to launch terrorist attacks, and then sit back and watch authorities play whack-a-mole. Obama and Hillary tried to sound serious about fighting terrorist groups this week. They each said they had the best way to defeat their enemies. Then they both declared jihad on Republicans and conservatives. I see a Whoopi Goldberg joke. This has got promise. Vaunted World <laughs> War II historian Whoopi Goldberg said on The View that Hitler was a Christian. In her attempt to impugn Christians, Whoopi educated the audience on Hitler history. Like when the tyrant bit down on a cyanide pill that killed him. He thought he was really putting a communion wafer in his mouth. I have to go to church after this. Jeez. Obama is claiming that his Syrian refugee vetting process is already stringent enough. Refugees will be asked one question. Do you plan to vote Democrat? Answering yes will get them welcomed in and showered with government entitlements. Answer no, and they will be immediately targeted by the IRS. Michael Moore, in defiance of Michigan's governor not wanting to accept any Syrian refugees in his home state, said he will accept refugees in his own, in his own home anyway. However, the vast majority of refugees have already declined Moore's offer, saying their religion forbids them from living with a pig. That's what you call finishing strong. And that is your weekend update for November 22nd, 2015. Brought to you by Mr. Eric Williams at barbwiresatire.com, baby. That is not what I was looking for. <laughs> Forty-eight minutes left to go. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a reason you don't use the soundboard a lot on Sundays. Oh my god! You have severely impaired soundboard abilities Jesus. on Sundays. Right. You add, add that to the fact. I'm waiting for the game on bumper. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. It'll come out. I don't even. I don't I know. even know what. I, I know. Don't even, I don't. Even it's know almost what, like a. I, I it don't even it know what, 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 what brought on me. But I, I do I do want to thank everybody for bearing with me. I have been feeling like absolutely... I hate this place. Nothing works here. The medications don't work. <laughs> I've been here for seven years. Okay, so after that nonsense, let's roll into the death knell of Obamacare. Everybody's been hearing about it. Everybody's been saying it. But I will tell you something, Stacy. You know, you hear generic platitudes out there. And for those of you, for those of you who are interested, to my mind, and of course for this particular segment, I don't have any of her her articles. But since the inception and even before that of Obamacare, when it was being not debated but shoved down our throats in secret, Megan McArdle over at Bloomberg News has done some of the best, most in depth. And explanatory writing on Obamacare along with Byron York. And yeah. it's so funny because Byron York and Megan McArdle have never stopped talking about this law and how it will not work. And it's funny, to my mind, in a year right now, in an election cycle where Republicans should have the upper hand politically, you have not heard the candidates really wringing this. I, you, know, you know, you and I speak sometimes, and we, and we want to be honest with the audience, and no matter who your candidate is, you know, there are no vaunted saints out there because I don't hear enough people really ripping this apart and saying they're going to repeal every word of this. But from what you and I have seen with this news this week, Stacey, that might actually be a winning strategy for the first candidate who decides to, to really grab hold of it, no? 
Well, I mean, clearly the most vocal one about Obamacare for several years now has been Ted Cruz. He does say he will repeal and replace every word of Obamacare. I think he has the most, um, the strongest position. And Carly Fiorina has been very clear about re replacing Obamacare with, you know, something that is, oh, my God, why wouldn't we try this? A free market alternative. We have. Um, yeah. And, and, and Ben Carson has put his own thoughts and plans out there. And honestly, I, I kind of like his the best because it spends less money and actually gives people more care. So That's go figure. Why. That is not why you like it the best. Huh? Do you, do you know why you like Ben Carson's plan the best? Why? Because you just wanted to hear. I would like to thank all the people in the world today and the children and talk about my health plan. <laughs> well, no, but in, in, in reality, if you listen to his plan with Medicaid spending and the actual dollars and how they could be reallocated to take care of some of those who don't have access to employer-based plans, um, I, think, I think some of his ideas are really, really good. Nobody else is talking about these concierge doctors that don't take insurance. You pay in. Um, you know, there's there's other alternatives out there that we definitely need to take a look at. The, the primary problem with Obamacare is really twofold. Um, number one, it continues to insure, in, insure people um, and remove them from the cost of their health care so that all of these all of these subsidies are doing what HMOs did you know, in the late 80s and early 90s. If you, all you got to do is pay 20 bucks for something, you're not going to look for A, the best service, or B, the best cost. No, ab absolutely. Um, and I, and you I, know, and that's really what insurance in general has done to, to consumers of health care forever. We right, do more the, research on our cars than our doctors. Right, but they, whether it was the corn husky kid, when there, there has never been, and, and this is a bold statement, because we're talking about Washington, D.C. and the United States federal government. There has never in the history of mankind been a bigger piece of crony capitalist legislation mm -hmm. than the, the, the Affordable Care Act. There just has not been. I want you to think about going back to budget reconciliation, the way this was passed mechanically as a farce with 51 votes, even to get to that metric. You had the Cornhusker kickback. You had the Louisiana purchase. You had an on and on and on. You had what was essentially the death knell of what was considered blue dog and moderate Democrats in both the House and the Senate, and this administration was okay with it because they didn't care. Do you want to know why? Because they stood up what was called risk corridors, and they took these private companies Companies, these private insurers who are just as bad as the government on this one. And they pulled them in, and this quasi-socialist administration took these private companies, and they had them made a deal with the devil. And they said, listen to us. We're going to have these risk pools and corridors where you're going to be on the back end, and you're going to be subsidized. And we're going to pay billions of dollars in marketing. And on and on and on and on and on. And then you take and a then company. And then they couldn't even develop a website. Then you take the largest company in the network, the largest insurer in the country, United Healthcare. United Healthcare, which was complicit in this because us, just as we were saying when this was happening, they took the money and ran. Why? Because I had a shareholder meeting Thursday. United Healthcare cast doubt on its ability to carry plans on the healthcare laws exchanges beyond 2016, offering a more grim financial outlook than had previously expected. From the company's CEO, in recent weeks, growth expectations for individual exchange participation have tempered industry-wise. Do you know what that means when a CEO says that on an earnings call? It means because of certain legalities, I can't say it right now, but we are so far gone out of this, you have no idea. Do you want to know why? Because my job is to run a public company, and I have a fiduciary responsibility to my shareholders. And what has happened in the last quarter? A $425 million loss to one single company in these exchanges representing 26 cents a share to the share well, price of one of the biggest health providers in the country. This but is I mean, the start of the But I mean, if you take a look at it, it's already bankrupted the not-for-profits that tried to do it. I think there's more than a dozen that have just folded. So you take United Healthcare out of the mix in 2017, um, you know, one of the things this was supposed to do that it really didn't do because we still had all these things confined by state was create, you know, competition in the market. You just took the biggest dog out of the pool. So, I mean, when you look at the double digit increases that were requested nationwide, when you look at what some of the state insurance commissioners did, said, nope, you can't have that. Blue Cross Blue Shield is going to lose money. Cigna is going to lose money. Anybody that is in this right now is going to lose money simply because the vast majority, apparently, of our Congress doesn't even understand how insurance works. 
No, but if you're wanna... going to insure a population of people, you have to have the risk within that population spread. And the major flaw of Obamacare has been and will continue to be that the young and the healthy do not enroll. Until the cost of not enrolling is greater than the cost of enrolling, they're not going to. The 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 thing with uh, you know, but nobody. I mean, to, to to be honestly, to be fair, nobody understands insurance by the insurers. Uh, for those of you who are interested, few of half of the original twenty three co ops co ops that were founded mm-hmm. for the exchange are still up and running, and twelve or thirteen new startup insurers for this nonsense actually folded within the past month. Uh, the best writing on this I saw was uh, Ed Morrissey in Hot Air and Byron York in the Washington Examiner. Uh, both those articles out within the last 24 to 48 hours. I recommend you check it out. And honestly, guys, this goes back to the politics of it. Our people have got to learn to seize onto moments like this. Oh, 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 oh. And just one nice little piece of info before we punch out. ABC, NBC, and all the Spanish networks, Telemundo and Univision, had nothing to say about this story on Friday. CBS ran 46 seconds. So if you don't think it's a conspiracy, then your tinfoil hat isn't on tight enough. We're going to have Michael Topia. That's right. Michael Loft is at the Flipside Show. Take us out to the break, baby. Get over to FlipsideShow.com. J.D. and Stacey here on K98. Bloody Marys and Broad Cheats coming back in about four minutes. You know, this is America, last time I checked, and you can choose to live wherever you want to live. You can live in reality, where it's wild and insanity happens, or you can be like me and live in my brain, where things make sense. Yeah, it's a little place I like to call Michaeltopia. Join me, won't you? There are no human locusts in Michaeltopia. What I mean by that is this. Uh, states like Texas are getting flooded with Californians. Californians that voted Democrat their whole lives and destroyed it, right? They tried to make the taxes so high that people had to leave. And then they went to Texas and they kept voting Democrat. Swarms of locusts with hipster beards and vape pens saying stuff like, I don't know, bro, Bernie Sanders is really starting to make a lot of sense to me, man. Ah. No, he's not. Now shut up and get out of Texas. If you are looking for a place to live, let me suggest the democratic utopia of Detroit, you smelly, smelly hippie. I went John Oliver on the end of that one. It's available at theflipsideshow.com. And in Michaeltopia, you follow us on Twitter, you follow us on Facebook, and we're all friends and we all get along. There you go. That is a fantastic thing. All right. That's all the time we have for for the show. Thank you so much for coming out. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. The staff of K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network is proud to announce that our very own Rowdy Rick Robinson has been selected as one of the top conservative talk show hosts in the nation for his program, America Off the Rail. Again, congratulations to Rowdy Rick Robinson for a job well done and another reason to stay connected to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, 
You didn't build that. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, my, I felt this thrill going up my leg. I mean, well, I don't have that too often. Steady. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. Ricky Robinson, host of America Off the Rails, will tackle the important issues facing America today as he tries to keep America from coming off the track. Get ready to hear the truth every Monday through Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, here on K98talk.com and the Spark Radio Network. From the Vikings of Norway to my home down south to Washington, D.C., I've been around. I've seen it all, and I've come out on top. You better beware, for all you know, the bell tolls for you. Enter the bell tower or watch your step. 8 p.m. for Thursdays, K98 Talk. K98talk.com, a leader in Internet radio. So grab your seatbelts and take the ride of your life on K98talk.com. Welcome back, J.D. and Stacy on Bloody Mary's on Broadsheets. Your kill for that mainstream media hangover on that K98 Talk. Everybody, you know what to do. Get over to K98talk.org right now. Get in that chat room. Say hello to the most interactive, smartest, drunkest LSD taking this drunkest in the morning <laughs> radio listening audience in the business. We want to thank our Thursday lead in here, that Bell River, for whom the bell tolls. Remember, guys, we're not just here live Sunday, 11 a.m. for that Bloody Mary's on Broadsheets. We do it again. Tuesday and Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard. Stacey and I are live for Game On. Fridays, we do again 5 p.m. WN, 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 JC, South Jersey, Philadelphia, Northern Delaware for that 4.2 million listeners on that drive time leading into that Yahoo Sports. And remember, 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 find the catalog of everything we've done here with that Riggy Tiki Tommy Rick Robinson on our K98 talk over at Spreaker.com. Hashtag JD and Stacey, A N D S T A C E O Y. And we are back. I, you know what? I think we're going to. We're going to try and drop one of those uh, uh, Loftus flip sides, uh, maybe one a show. So maybe we get about three of those going a week and break them down. Vote in the chat room. Who likes the, uh, who likes the Michael Topia uh, uh, flip side pieces? What do you think? There's a 15-second delay, so watch in a few. Never took acid, J.D. Weed. I didn't inhale more than 5,000 times. I'm not, okay. All right. So for those of you who don't think the chat room is a good time, it's Sunday morning at 1127. Okay. Forget about what Keyshawn Johnson and, and, and Berman are talking about in ESPN. I'm just going to read this out of the chat room. Uh, never took acid, JD. Weed. I didn't inhale more than 5,000 times. It, the next one, I do. Flip side. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Out of Context Chat. No, it's called Sunday, 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. One more time. And for those Only you, you could make me look forward to the end of football season. Oh, you love me. Well, you know what Stacy you know what Stacy and I do at the end of every football season. Every football season day after the Super Bowl. Every this is what we do. Why do we do that? We hang midgets off of trees and beat them with bats pretending they're pinatas. Why don't you tell people? <laughs> I don't even understand where that came from. <laughs> Me neither. This is the cold medicine. I have no midget hate. That's you. I don't know. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with hate. It's, it's more like it's fascination. Okay, okay. Talking, okay. About, right. talking about fascination, who we cannot get away from. Oh, Durka, Durka, Durka. Who won oh. what? And why do they want to do that, Scott Joe? Virgin. That's right. So basically... Well, and it also causes, like, a complete disturbance in the force because I find myself watching Bill Maher and agreeing with him. 
You know what's funny? We're gonna we're gonna take that Bill Maher clip. We're gonna break it down a little bit. I want to take it at least two minutes deep because I can't remember her name. Her name is Christian. Ugh. Christian. Chris. She used to be with the, the Christian. Dummy Science. in purple. Yeah, she used to be with the Christian Science Monitor. I'm not sure if she's with Bloomberg now. Um, I'll, I'll get her name. I just, she's Canadian. No, it's very important that clip. When you sent it to me, I had no idea it was going to run at what she said at the two-minute mark. Delves into something that I found researching this story that I honestly hadn't heard before, and it literally terrifies me. Literally terrifies me. We'll get to that in a minute. What we're actually talking about here is what you've been hearing referred to as the Syrian refugee crisis. What is the Syrian ref- right? What is the refugee crisis? Is it the refugee crisis that Wyclef Jean can't sell out uh, uh, anything bigger than the Olive Garden anymore? No. The Syrian refugee crisis is a direct result of a four-year-old civil war in the country of Syria, ruled by the Assad family, son of the the former dictator, Assad al-Ashar, is in there now. You know, the guy, Obama, red line, this guy can't go, gonna kick his ass. Yeah, him. So for the last four years, he's been brutally repressing his people in a vicious civil war. Stats, stats, some statistics I pulled here from uh, World Vision, which is a humanitarian organization, uh... In the last four years of the Syrian civil war, 12 million Syrians have been forced from their homes because of the conflict. Four million Syrians are refugees. Most are in Turkey, Lebanon, and Jordan. More than 700,000 refugees have risked their life just this year traveling across Europe. More than 3,200 of them have lost their lives this year. Uh, I think they said about half of those. But, oh, here it is. Since the civil war began, more than 240,000 people have been killed, including 12,000 ch- children. One million more have been wounded or permanently disabled. One of the things that jumped out at me, at least how World Vision, um, this humanitarian, and you can go check them out at worldvision.org. It's not an endorsement. It's just where I happen to pull up uh, this, this piece of information. The way that they're explaining it here, I, I haven't heard it put in these terms yet. The Syria crisis is affecting some 12 million displaced people. If you put that in context of recent um, uh, uh, world events, Only 3.5 million were affected in the Haiti earthquake, 1.7 million affected in Katrina, and 5 million during the Indian Ocean tsunami. So if you add that all up, you actually have more people uh, displaced in the Syria civil war in the last four years than in those three, which were really major earth-shattering events. Um, Stacey, did you want to speak a little bit about the surprise you had about what you were hearing on this Bill Maher panel, and we can lead into that? Well, I mean, I don't think that it was a surprise to hear Bill Maher talking very um, plainly and and taking up some degree of debate about radical Islam. I mean, of all the liberal pundits I have seen and heard, um, he's the one who is, in my mind, getting this right. He he doesn't um, put out a lot of necessarily anti-Muslim feeling, but what he does do, not do ever, is link jihad to radical islam um he makes that link and he makes it very clearly and you know i think what he's looking for is debate about what the right course of action is and he's also been a huge supporter of folks who have been victims of muslim terrorism or sharia law you know young women who have left the religion now considered apostate coming on his show who were victims of genital mutilation who were victims of honor honor, um, violence, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he calls out what's wrong with Sharia law and how it does not match with our values and really challenges the liberals on the panel to to prove he's wrong. And if you know, if you, if you know anything of Bill Maher and his beliefs, he basically, if, if you believe him from where he comes from, he is, you know, for those of you who really want to delve into libertarianism, it's a very broad spectrum. And he sees himself coming from the pretty left end of the libertarian spectrum. And if you listen to him a lot of times, you know, look, first of all, the guy's a comedian, so I don't like getting on comics for what they say. His job is to make people laugh. I happen to think the guy is funny. But Mm -hmm. he does say swami detestable things about conservatives, and you can tell he thinks that a lot of us are knuckle-draggers because of what we believe. But one thing I like about Mar, Mar really has, starting with Ben Affleck, who threw it up in his face like he was a racist, has really been one of the few people on the left side of any spectrum to say, hey, man, Listen, everybody grab a hold of themselves and let's not enter into a suicide pact because of political correctness and progressivism. These people are animals. They do not play well and get along with others. They actually have to be eradicated and defeated. 
And for those of you who know Mars politics and how supportive he's been of this president and administration, I think the best way to play this is I'm going to play Obama basically trolling Republicans, saying they're afraid of three-year-old orphans. And then I want you to hear Bill Maher, who is one of his biggest and staunchest supporters. So this is uh, Obama about four days ago, maybe three. We're welcome. Uh, uh, we're, we're open to hearing actual ideas, but that's not really what's been going on in this debate. When candidates say we want to admit three-year-old orphans, that's political posturing. When individuals say that we should have a religious test and that only Christians, proven Christians, should be admitted, that's offensive. He's such an angry to bastard, American isn't values. He? I cannot think of a more, uh, more potent recruitment tool for ISIL than some of the rhetoric that's been coming out of here uh, uh, during the course of this debate. All right, that, that's enough of this idiot. I, I, I mean, he is honestly tougher on Republicans than, than he is on ISIS. This was, Stacey, do you know, was this from his show this week? Bill Maher? No, yeah, the panel. I believe so. Yes. Right. It this came is, out on the blaze like two days ago. Okay, this is uh, this is a, a cut from the the Mar panel. It's uh, uh, it, it actually it speaks for itself. On TV, fifty six percent of Americans believe that the Syrian refugee refugees have odds that are at values are, are at odd, their values are at odds with our values. Um, that may not be wrong. Uh, if if you are in this religion you probably do have values that are at odds. This is what liberals don't want to recognize. Uh, you may be from a country, as there are many, many Muslim countries that either have Sharia law or want Sharia law. Those values are not our values. Can I read what David Cameron said? He's the prime minister of, uh, of Britain, as we know. He said, uh, the root cause of the threat we face is the extremist ideology itself. Let's not forget our strongest weapon, our own liberal values. We believe in respecting different faiths, but also expecting these faiths to support the British way of life. Too often we have lacked the confidence to enforce our values for fear of causing offense. And then he talks about the horrors of forced marriage. He talks about how the utter brutality of female genital mutilation is too common in his country. Nearly 4,000 cases, and that's just the reported cases. 11,000 cases of honor-based violence. I'm not saying this is going to happen in America, but this idea that somehow we do share values that all religions are alike is bullshit, and we need to call it. No, no I, I. I actually strongly disagree with that, Bill. I think that it is incredibly important, particularly now after the Paris attacks, particularly now with ISIL raging around the world, to stand up for real diversity and to say our diversity is our strength. So that keeping is, women as second-class no, citizens no, is I'm just diversity? That. I'm not saying that. But, but you what, are but saying what, that. No, I'm That's not. what it comes down no, to. No, I'm not. What I'm saying is we, in, ca we in Canada are not going to... Okay, good. I wanted to stop it right there. Where she said we in Canada are not going to blah, 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 be scared off of the Syrian refugee crisis. Uh, Yahoo News, Canada to fly in nine. Now, I want you to think about how much we rail about the southern border and how porous it is. The northern border is an absolute joke and you can walk across. It's how all the ecstasy came into this country in the 90s and early 2000s. You want to know why? Because we don't have an immigration problem streaming over the northern Canadian border, which means it's our, our, our most open, expansive border. Canada plans to fly in 900 Syrian refugees a day. A day. As of next month, according to media reports, as their defense minister said, showing compassion for these people sends a message to Islamic State extremists. Canadian officials said details of a plan to take in 25,000 Syrian refugees by year's end would be announced Tuesday. Our president and John Kerry are lost in a fantasy land along with defense minister Hajit Sajjan of Canada. What he said, what this man said is... This crisis is not just about a humanitarian project. This also sends a great message to ISIS that you might create this environment, but we will not let you take advantage of this. We are, str we, we are actually hitting ISIS in a different way as well. Stacy. you can't make this up. It actually doesn't matter if Obama gets 10,000 in. 
because the Canadians are going to be flying in 900 a day. Two minutes. It's just, it's, that clip with Mayor, if you haven't seen it, you have to watch it because that woman from Canada, um, you know, and I think at the end of that video, Bill Mayer really, you know, brings it down to a point. You all are, the left is using compassion to shut down debate about security. It's really that simple. Um, and, you know, I think Bill had a great point. Their values do not match our values. And they went through a lot of statistics in terms of the percentage of various largely Muslim populations that support ISIS and their goals. It's 20% in some countries. I believe Syria is one of those countries. Um, 20% is way too many people are posting that oh only 20 percent only 20 percent that's a huge number you can't vet these people appropriately you can't assure us that the the refugee pipeline is not also being used as a pipeline for terrorists in fact they've said they've said that it is isis has said it you know when isis says something maybe we should start actually listening to them because they're not really lying they pretty much do what they say they're gonna do the only poll the only poll, the only poll that anybody needs to read is in an NBC News story on NBCNews.com. You know what the title of it is? Earlier Arab immigrants also wary of Syrian refugees. Yep. You think we don't think these people represent all values? Neither do their own people. They're not rolling out the welcome wagon for the Syrian refugees and oh. Arab immigrant enclave of Dearborn, Michigan, the article goes on. Quote, we do not need no more troubles, you know, unquote, said Hikam Dawil, who immigrated to the U.S. three decades ago. I feel bad for the people. On the other hand, look what's happening in France. This is crazy, you know. It's just evil. The wheel of father of five college kids, all born here, runs his own heating and cooling business, said the ISIS attacks turned his stomach and the fallout effects affect him in the Arab community. Quote, we, can just, we just cannot afford to be looked at like, oh, well, you are one of them, he said. Da, 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 da. Here. He supports Snyder's move to block... C now, this is, this is a Syrian by 100%. Quote, it's a great idea because we have a bunch of refugees coming from overseas. We don't know what they're about yet. We don't know what they're bringing with them. We don't know what liability is going to be on us after they get here. So I think the decision they came up with was the best decision because at least it gives us time to assess the situation. And that was a Syrian in Dearborn, Michigan. Go to this article, NBCNews.com. The, their own people don't want him here, kids. Their own people do not want him here. You want to know why? Because they fled that area of the world for a reason and they know you cannot take him here and mass. But what you can do, baby, is you can go top off that drink, top off that stink, hop off whatever help makes you think. JD and Stacey coming back, taking you in the 12 o'clock hour with a little fun nonsense in the world. Diamond Dave, take us out, baby. One break coming Everybody, this is Jason, host of According to Me. I'd like to invite you to check out my show. It's a two-hour show that lasts 60 minutes in. Uh, listen, I hate to interrupt, but uh, one thing I can do is read off a script. Just say, uh, let me be clear a lot. It works. President Obama, I, I, I can't handle this. It's a radio promo. I, I'm not green. I've done this before. Did someone say green? Now, Al Gore is here. Listen, I'm just trying to record a radio promo. Do you mind? Now, uh, do you say good things about me on the show? <laughs> no, not at all. But if it makes you feel any better, I rip on Republicans just as much. The AM radio frequencies give off very high levels of radiation. Look, my show is on the internet, which you invented. I mean, can, I, can I just do my promo? I got a pen. I can veto that, you know. I know you got a pen. It's not a law. It's a radio promo. Listen, listen, just listen to my show. Barack Obama and Al Gore hate it, so you're going to love it. Here's an executive order. Don't listen to a show. He doesn't like me. He's racist. And he doesn't recycle either. That's it. I'm done. It's According to Me, Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on K98 Talk. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost, for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. 
K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com. Welcome back to all our political geeks, freaks, and back alley sneaks. J.D. and Stacy here on K98. Bloody Marys and Broad, she's taking you into the noon o'clock hour here on K98 Talk. Everybody right now, get over to K98Talk.org. Get in that chat room. Listen to all our great listeners in the chat room. Listen to our chat moderator tell people that she's actually out on Twitter playing around. It's one of them great, great radio mysteries. She's smacking a trumo, according to the last thing I saw. No. <laughs> I saw her in there. Remember, guys, we're not no, just here live at 11 a.m. That was a keyboard, a keyboard mistake. No, oh, oh, so you weren't on Twitter smashing a Trumpkin? Uh, no, I was on Twitter smashing ah, a Trumpkin. Ah, that's so. Every once in a while, when she doesn't answer, folks, that's where she is on the Twitters. Remember, guys, I did it during the break. Sunday, 11 a.m. We're live Thursday, <laughs> Tuesday, 5, 3, what the hell time are we? 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Game On. We're live Friday, 5 p.m. Drive Time, WNWN, WNWN, and JC, 1360 a.m. That's Southern New Jersey, Philadelphia, Northern Delaware for that 4.2 million listeners. And as always, kids, you can get over to. Spreaker.com, hashtag JD and Stacy. Find out a catalog of everything we've been doing here. And you never shut off that K98 talk. Why? Live 3 p.m. today. Office hours with Dr. A in that Bell River, Miss Lou, right? 3 p.m. live on that office hours? I believe so. What are you talking about today, Doctor? Put it. Did he what say? am I doing? No, the Doctor. Oh. We'll give him a little promo. I mean, he's hanging He's hanging out in the chat room, what, three hours before his show starts? Oh, did he say he's following? They're, us they're talking about the presidential paradox. Are they following us today, or what are they doing? 3 p.m.? Anyway. All right, before we go into to, to some of the nonsense, uh, there is maybe a little something to be heartened about. I don't think any of this will, will come to fruition for us by 2016. But something that did jump out at me um, was Speaker Ryan, who I have got to tell you something. I am prepared to take everything with a grain of salt. Did not think he was the best in the conservatism coming to the House, but I have got to tell you something. Uh, this past week, he did something that I do not remember John Boehner doing. Uh, if he has done it, I can't remember the last time he did it. And it was actually seizing a political moment. The House voted uh, Thursday 289 to 137 basically to have a security test. It kind of slows down the, the entrance of the Syrian refugees. The problem for the Obama administration is 50 Democrats voted with them to make it veto-proof in the House. And Paul Ryan mm-hmm. took it right to the administration, and he says that he was, quote, baffled that the president would issue uh, uh, such a threat on something he saw as a security measure. Now, when you go to the news of the Senate, ah, Mitch McConnell says he's going to get that up there, and but, but, but they're probably not going to vote on it till uh, after Thanksgiving. Yeah? So, first of all, this man is sick. This man is sick. He is disgusting. Senate leadership has to go. You have Paul Ryan in the House. You, you, you get a veto-proof bill against this nonsense, and then Jerkoff says, well, we're going to wait till after Thanksgiving. And you want to know what? Because he brought regular order back to the Senate, Harry Reid says, don't worry. It will never pass because it will never get debated with the 60 threshold. You got five bucks, folks? Donate it to anybody who will knock off Mitch McConnell. All right, seven minutes. What do we got going on? Oh, by the way, if our stalker is listening to us, you crazy, crazy freak shows. You're going to love this story. Cartoonish trans character leads to call for Zoolander 2 boycott. That's right. That right. That gigantic conservative Ben Stiller. Ben Stiller, <laughs> the big Hollywood conservative. Zoolander 2 doesn't arrive in theaters until next year, but its recently released trailer is creating a bit of a stir. An online petition created by Sarah Rose is urging for a boycott of the Ben Stiller film because of a new character played by Sherlock star Benedict Cumberbatch, a supermodel named All. Rose writes in Zoolander 2 trailer, an androgynous character played by Benedict. Who the hell is Benedict Cumberbatch? Is asked oh, by he's Zo- big. He's big in the in the high school college girl set. They love him. He played in uh, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, is asked by Zoolander and Hansel if he is a male or female model, and if they have a hot dog or a bun. <laughs> 
Additionally, Cumberbatch's character is clearly portrayed as an over-the-top cartoonish mockery. Okay. All right. Okay, can I just say this? Wait, no, Earlier no, no, no. this let me, week, let me we had this. Hillary wait, Clinton. Wait, 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 let me, could... let me finish the sentence. An over-the-top cartoonish mockery of androgyny trans non-binary individuals. This is Zoolander 2 with Ben Stiller. Everything is supposed to be over the top. It's a comedy. Well, and that's part of the problem. So Laugh Factory had some comedians poke some fun at Hillary Clinton, right? And Hillary Clinton wants their names and personal information, okay? You now have, this is another article we were going to discuss, 40% of millennials being supportive of hate speech laws. Are you kidding me? Uh, you know what? I am so sick. I am so sick of, of all of this nonsense. LBGT FQ5 6 train, okay? I, I really don't care. I really don't care. I'm just going to keep There's like 12 Three of them. Three simple words. I am gay. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I mean, I don't, listen, I don't care. We're addressed. We're supposed, no, but we're happy. supposed to completely change the way that comedy, comedy runs. I mean, we talked about this the last time Loftus was on the show. Can you imagine if the Jeffersons were on today? No, the Jeffersons couldn't be on today. The Jeffersons I know. Neither could, could, neither could um, Sanford could not, and Son. Not, could not be on today. Could neither not be could on soap. today. Wait, what? Neither could Soap. Wait. With the first, with the first gay character that, that Billy Crystal played. It was a complete character. No, I'm getting down to Sanford and Son now, baby. Shut up, you big dummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But, I mean, can you think of the things? You okay, know, terrific. Family, wildly popular. And and really, when you stop and think about it, changing the culture because Archie Bunker became the caricature by perfect. the time that went off the air. Do you do you think you could get away? First of all, All in the Family, Carol O'Connor, Archie Bunker, one of the best shows ever put on television. The funny thing about that show, he gets such a ragging for being a racist and that 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 that, which is what he was written on the show. But the show is really about progressive social progression and inclusion, and and it's. But when you could, could you get away with, I will never forget, it's one of the, like the first or second season, and Gloria brings home Meathead, and they're sitting there arguing, and, and, and Michael's talking to him about the Bible. And Archie turns around, and he goes, let me tell you something, Meathead, tell me, tell me nothing about no Bible there. I know all about my Bible. And what do you, you know about the Bible? He goes, I know exactly how the Bible went. He goes, first, everybody was Jews. Then God sent down his son, and he said, we can't have no more of this here. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, but you could not. But was that was you. on that was on network television when I was a kid. Oh my god! And the others, and the, the other best. Now that you got my mind going, you could never get the show. There's a there's a, there's an all in the family episode where Archie gets locked in the basement and everybody goes away for the weekend, right? So he's in the basement and he doesn't think he's getting out and he finds a bottle of vodka and he sits down there and he drinks the whole bottle of vodka and he passes out and he's got no concept of time and he's down there and he thinks he's dying. And he's on his knees. He's like, all right, Lord, how come, come take me. And there's a guy knocking at the top of the stairs. He's like, Mr. Bunker, Mr. Bunker, Mr. Bunker. He's like, okay, Lord, I'm ready. He's like, Mr. Bunker, I'm coming, I'm coming. He's like, all right, Lord. And he turns around and the door bursts open. And it's a black guy who opened the door to come get him. And Archie Bunker thinks it's God. And he turns around and he sees the guy and he goes, oh, holy jeez. Jefferson was right. <laughs> But okay, when terrific. About, when you think about what comedy like that accomplished, Archie Bunker became the caricature. People laughed at him because some of what he said was a, it was funny, but it was also ridiculous. Absolutely, and the thing, and, is, you know, and we're totally losing the ability to have discussion in our culture through our mediums of entertainment. I mean, if you think about the number of comedians. Not just these folks at the Lap Factory who have been eviscerated on social media with boycotts, with this, that, and the other thing. Because they're trying to be funny, and if we can't laugh at some of this, what are, I mean, what are we going to do? You look at the timelines of people like Sally Cohn and Amanda Marcotte and some of these progressive leftists. They're just angry and depressed all the time, and nothing is ever funny. Because they haven't had vitamin D since vitamin D had them. All right, moving on. <laughs> We have a global warming update, though. 
From the Associated Press, people fired up snowblowers and dug out their shovels Saturday after the first significant snowstorm of the season dumped between a few and 20 inches of snow across the upper Midwest, blanketing a swath from South Dakota to Michigan. The storm created hazardous travel conditions and caused more than 500 flight cancellations. A blast of much colder air was following the storm. The National Weather Service said the snow, which first fell in South Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa on Friday, would head northeast into Canada late Saturday after moving through Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan. It was also snowing like hell out in Colorado. They were digging themselves out and ISIS is on the march killing people globally uh, I, I think they executed attacks in three or four different countries inside of about 72 hours our president John Kerry running around the biggest threat we have to us is climate change less than a minute take us out. take us out Bernie Sanders agrees Bernie Sanders is a, is a oh wait who Bernie who agrees Sanders. who agrees Bernie Sanders. I'm starting to get you. Shut up. Everything is out of the aisle. I can't find anything today. I hate this place. Nothing works here. Here it is. Boom, boom, boom. Could you think of a better place to leave our Sunday morning show, baby? We want to thank everybody for joining us on a very, very Under the Weather for J.D. Sunday. I want to thank Stacy for dealing with me. We want to thank Ricky Tiki Tavi, Rick Robinson, and that K98 Talk for having us here. Remember, kids, we're back live Tuesday, 11 a.m. No, Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard for Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. I want to thank everybody in the chat room, the greatest, bestest, nakedest, listening, audio in the business, Lionel! Lionel! Well, I always keep Lionel in my head. Wait, it, the piano? Oh, you got the right one. I did. Say whatever it is you say on Sunday, because I always tell you to say something you don't like. Oh, well, today, kids, going to get ready for big turkey day, pies and dressing and woohoo, lots of shopping. I will be watching some NFL, NFL football and keeping myself, will I always am, barstools, alleyways, shady situations, the occasional donkey show, and being that Thanksgiving's coming up, J.D. might even go to church. If I live through it, I'll see everybody Tuesday night. If it's Sunday, it's Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. We're your cure from your weekly news hangover. Thank you for taking it easy with us. You can find our show account on Twitter at JD and Stacy, or send us your interesting news story of the week to Game On War. That's W A A R at gmail.com. And you can find me on Twitter at Scott's Fire and on Facebook at Stacy Lennox. And you can find me on the Twitters at GameOnJD. When our water heater broke down last month, it was a nightmare. It took five hours for the plumber to show up, and he charged us a couple of hundred bucks just to come out. Then it cost another $1,800 to put in the new water heater. By the time it was all said and done, I felt like I'd been taken. But what else could I do? The smartest thing you can do is get a home warranty from American Residential Warranty. Their home warranties pay to repair or replace all your major appliances when they break. And they will break. And at the worst possible time, call American Residential Warranty right now for free information on home warranties starting at just pennies a day. Don't wait for your refrigerator to stop running or your ceiling fans to stop turning. Call American Residential Warranty right now. Ask how you can save up to 50% on water and dryer coverage. Just call 1-800-513-6154. That's 1-800-513-6154. Again, 1-800-513-6154. Call now. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Giggity, 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 let's have sex.